I'm also uh, seeing a lot of stuff about Brandon Ayuk um, getting traded. So not going to happen. I, I think that's still to be determined. No, it's not. I, I'm shutting. I'm I'm shutting down anything that you've seen is just not true. He's not getting traded. I can I can I can confirm. I hope uh, he I does. Confirm. But... I just confirmed. Go out and listen. You don't have to back me on this if you don't want to stand on business, but. I'm coming out and because I'm going to be ahead of the story and saying that there is a 0% chance that Brandon Ayuk gets traded this season. He will be on the 49ers. Audio jungle. Welcome in. Doing the Brandon Ayuk episode. Very interesting situation that I wanted to touch on. And I feel like now that the dust has kind of settled, I feel like my positioning from the beginning is kind of in a good place. Obviously, this could be proven wrong. I'm doing it solo today. That guy Noah's absolutely petrified to get rid of his social life, so he is out drinking on a Thursday night instead of locking in. Apparently, what time is it? It's five o'clock. He couldn't he couldn't squeeze something in this afternoon. So I don't know. Get, get somebody get that guy into wraps. So I want to start this by saying let's start with the relationship with the 49ers. Right after the Super Bowl loss, I'll pop it up on the screen. His brother went on social media pretty much being like be, how does your best wide receiver only have three catches in a Super Bowl? We're going to the Raiders. First off, what a pool. What a bizarre pool to go to the Raiders. Um, then 48 hours after the Super Bowl, they did the media, media availability. And I'll play that clip right now. Brandon, there's been some stuff on social media. Um, is, is there a certain message that you want to get out there as you kind of enter this offseason and there might be contract talks? A certain message, no. Is your hope to remain with the 49ers moving forward? If that's the right move, yeah. What would that right move look like for you? Being a champion. So, with that clip, it's obviously they're talking about the social media posts that his brother put up, which is people who are close to, to BA. Um, saying that he wanted to be a Raider, but when they asked him what his focus was, he says championships. So then let's just go on the absolute bizarre tour that Brandon Ayuk has gone on this off season. Right after that, the smoke with him and Jaden Daniels, which obviously if you guys don't know him and Jaden Daniels played at Arizona state together back in the day. And now that Jaden was going to the commanders, they started, they were tr probably training together all off season, hanging out, playing with the idea that they were going to be teammates all off season, which could be, could be great. But ultimately he's still under con he's under his fifth year with the 49ers and still under contract with them. So an absolutely bizarre thing to do. Um, then they start posting IG stories like uh, Jaden Daniels posted one. that was like six days until fireworks. My brother said um, they posted a TikTok. Uh, Jaden Daniels posted a TikTok saying the 49ers don't want him anymore. And then, the one that was really crazy was he was going on the pivot. He showed up with Jaden Daniels openly talked about playing with him, talking about how they could really cause some major damage in the league together, et cetera. And then lastly, him sitting in his, in his, his living room, watching film of the commander's practice, which like, that's gotta be a violation of some sort. I don't know what it was, but if you're watching Commander's film, which Commanders suck, they're not even a, a contender. Watch spending your time watching the Commander's film in the offseason is absolutely bonkers. So very weird. Now that kind of settled down. Now a few teams have emerged. Some real rumblings are starting to get going that he is going to be traded at some point before the season. So two teams that I feel like had the most buzz and the realness of it were the Patriots and the Steelers. So the Patriots, there's a report out there saying that they had a deal in place and they were willing to offer him $32 million per year. Massive deal for a wide receiver who has never had a recorded 80 receptions in a season and has never had double digit touchdowns. So my question then is what does BA actually want he doesn't want to get paid because you had an opportunity to make you more money than i personally think the market says about this type of wide receiver 
He's not one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, and he was going to get paid like it. And then he doesn't want to be in a situation where he wants to win, given the teams that is, that's listed that he wants to go to. I'd say, let's say he said Raiders. He wants to go to the Commanders, and he wants to go to the Steelers. Respectfully, the Steelers, I know that they're like in the mix every single season, but the Steelers are not a real contender. They're just not. So he turns down that deal, Brandon Ayuk, from the Patriots because he said of the quarterback situation. But you want to go to the Steelers who have Justin Fields and Russell Wilson? I'd say that's a worse quarterback situation than going to New England and playing with Jacoby Brissett and Drake May. Call me crazy, but I, I feel like that that's not like the wildest take in the world. If that's your, if that was the reason why you turned down $32 million per year to get paid like a real guy, which it's, I thought that's what he wanted, but turn it down because of the quarterback situation, but the team that you have your eyes set on has Justin Fields and Russell Wilson at quarterback. I feel like that's just as much as a question, just as much of a question mark going there than anywhere else. So that makes no sense to, to make less money and go to a spot where Brandon and I, you can land on the Steelers tomorrow. It does not change their Super Bowl odds. It just doesn't. And I think that they could probably win eight, nine games, sneak in a wild card spot. The Steelers have not won a uh, playoff game since 2016. 2016. So their fans who ultimately think that they have an opportunity to win a Super Bowl, they're absolutely delusional if they think adding Brandon Ayuk gets them any closer to winning a championship this year. It just doesn't. So I that entire situation really, really confused me. Now, where are we? Trade talks have completely dwindled. And this is what I think happens. It isn't if this would have happened, it would have happened two weeks ago. It is entirely too close to the season to make a trade this big because the Steelers are essentially expecting Brandon Ayuk to walk in and be their number one wide receiver. It's crazy to trade for a guy that is going to have that much expectation and get paid like a number one wide receiver two weeks before the season. You don't know the offense. He's been learning an entirely different offense in the whole offseason. It just feels like a big swing this close to the season to make it really work and football's different it's not players don't get what they want this isn't basketball this isn't plug and play this takes time and i just don't think as of right now him going to the steelers or any team if that matter is a real possibility so the niners do have the money to pay him long term they'd have the cap space obviously you have the brock birdie deal looming there's probably some other guys that i'm missing but ultimately that big the next big deal that they have on the books is Brock Purdy. I know Trent Williams wants a new deal, whatever, but they do have the money to give him a, a contract. And what does that contract do for them? Multiple things. I said this about the Panthers with Brian Burns. Why not get Brandon Ayuk under contract, pay him, have him have another year of production, and it just gives you an opportunity to set yourself up to trade him then next season if you really wanted to or keep him, whatever it looks like. But Instead of having him being in a contract year where he could potentially walk or you have to utilize a, a franchise tag, which would probably piss him off pretty even more, get him signed on a good a good deal where after next season cap moves up, whatever, that that might look like a good deal. At the, it might be like a bargain deal, honestly, at that point. So get him and then under contract and then at that point have another season of production, maybe even potentially raise his trade value and then give your team more flexibility to either keep him or move off of him if it makes sense at that time. What does that deal look like? I was looking through con wide receiver contracts. I feel like there's one contract that really sticks out, and that's the DJ Moore deal. Four years, $110 million, $27 million per year. Brandon Ayuk, you're a $100 million man. Congrats. What well, like... At a point, like I always kind of sit here, listen, fuck, I wish I had more money. Like, but I'm saying right now that if I had an opportunity to make $110 million, like I feel like to be on a really good team that actually has an opportunity to win a Super Bowl, like the Niners are a real contender. It's not like they're they're dwindling or anything like that. Like, I think everybody has the Niners at the top of the NFC, no doubt. So four years, 110 million, 27 um, million per year. And then to conclude it, this is a fair deal. It gives Brandon Ayuk the contract he wants. It gives the Niners the actual flexibility to then, instead of rushing into a trade this, this offseason, right before the season, have him on the team for this year, 
and then evaluate what they want to do moving forward after next season. That's the best th- possibility I feel like that they could have right now. And I feel like that's what we're leaning towards. I feel like the Brandon Ayuk deal is going to get done here pretty soon. He was seen at practice, blah, 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 et cetera, whatever that sounds like. But I think that pretty soon we're going to see this deal go through. He's going to be back with the 49ers this this season. And I thought that all along. I thought that a lot of this was smoke, but I feel like ultimately the Niners wanted that guy back in the building because their goal is to win a Super Bowl this year. And then next offseason, let's figure all this stuff out. Even when the draft time came around, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, we might trade one of those guys. It just never happened. If there was a time that it was going to happen, I think that the it would have been around around the draft because it would have just made the most sense. But ultimately, Brandon Ayuk staying in, in San Francisco is, is going to be my best guess as of this point. And I really my my big thing that I'm I'm curious about right now is how do Niners feel Niners fans feel about Brandon Ayuk? How do how does the public feel about Brandon Ayuk? I feel like he went on an absolute listen. Brandon Ayuk is probably one of the cool. If like if I met him, he's probably the coolest guy in the world. I just feel like what he did this offseason did not represent himself very well. It just is very diva like. Um, seemed very chaotic and off the wall people in his camp talking maybe like a little too much when ultimately this deal was going to get done he's an extremely talented wide receiver multiple teams had interest to get the deal done with him i mean look at what the patriots were going to pay that guy um and ultimately i just feel like it, it was extremely unnecessary so let me know in the comments what you guys think about the brandon Ayuk situation very bizarre but Ultimately, like I said, my prediction all along, Brandon Ayuk stays in San Fran, and I think that that deal looks like four years, $110 million, $27.5 million a year, the DJ Moore contract. Let me know what you guys think.